In this session, we'll see some examples for modus tollens. So, what is modus tollens rule? Like, it is a derived rule from your implies elimination rule. Okay, so what what does an implies elimination rule states when p is given and p implies q is also given? With that, we can uh, say that q is also valid. So, this is your implies elimination rule. And uh, when p implies give us, q is given and negation q is given we can say that negation P is valid. So that is modus polens and we have already seen the derivation for this rule, right? Now, I'll, uh, now we'll see two examples in this modus polens, I'll, uh, modus polens rule. Uh, so first example is given uh, P implies Q implies R, P and negation R are given. So these are all the premise. With this premise, we are going to prove negation Q. So first step is write down all the given premises. P is the premise and negation R is also a premise. So with this what we have to prove, we have to prove negation Q out of it. Okay, so now the next rule is here you have P implies Q implies R and here P is also valid. So based on your implies elimination of one and two, step one and two, we can write it as Q implies R, right? And now check it off, Q implies R is given and negation R is given. So this is similar to your modus tollens rule. So with that, what justification we can write? We can write it as negation Q. With modus tollens rule of comparing three and four, we can write it as negation Q. Hence, this is proved. Now take this example. Now in this example, this is a bit uh, complicated one. See here in the premise, we just have only one premise P implies Q. And this is the premise. And with this premise, we have to prove negation Q implies negation P. So when a case like this occurs, like for implies elimination, we always need a second component. Okay, negation actually works on another component. One more element is needed for breaking this negation. So it is not given over here. So what we can do now, we can take this side of your implies. In your conclusion, the first of your implies can be taken as an assumption. So here negation Q, you can take it as an assumption. And with this assumption, what we can say, now negation Q is given and P implies Q is given. According to modus tollens rule of one and two, we can write it as negation P. Okay, so here, this assumption proved it using your modus tollens rule. Okay, now negation P is given. So with this, what we can write like in place, like here negation P, we have started with the assumption and we have based on the given premises, we have, come, we have concluded to this negation P. So this can be written as negation Q implies negation P according to implies insertion between two to three. Okay, so this is your modus tollens rule. So always see the conclusion to say how to justify it. Okay, based on the conclusion, whatever is needed, your two will lies. See, when you, when you have only one term and a lot of premises, you try to make a comparison between the premises and try to apply some rules. And when you have a single premises and implies in the premises, always without assumption, we cannot prove it. So based on the conclusion, we can check for an assumption. If you have an implies, you take the first term. And if you have a single term, it is better to take the negation of a single term and prove use in your contradiction method. Okay, thank you.